Hi, right, everyone. Welcome to the timingresearch.com uh, Analyze Your Trade, uh, episode number 199. This is the new live charting format, and uh, we have arranged for six uh, great trading experts and analysts to join us today. Um, and we're just going to look at some charts and, and uh, um, uh, talk about the markets. So our, our first uh, analyst today is is uh, Matt of uh, Top Gun Options. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to him. Awesome. Thanks, David. Uh, I appreciate it. Uh, good morning. Good evening. Good afternoon. Welcome aboard. Uh, my, uh, we're, we call this uh, every Thursday at 10 a.m. the Accelerated Retirement Brief here at Top uh, Gun Options. We have a lot to talk about this morning, especially after yesterday's just insane uh, speech, press conference, presser, Q and A with Jerome Powell. So we're gonna we we're gonna map out a uh, a bunch of things this morning, uh, but I'm gonna brief you in the format that I brief uh, my folks at Top Gun Options in, which is called S O T, strategic, operational, and then tactical. So at Top Gun Options, we knock out in our live trade briefs. We knock out a strategic brief, 10, 15 minutes, uh, and that's what's going on around the globe. You can't sit here and talk about any trades at all without knowing uh, what's going on around the world. And then we peel back the uh, the onion, so to speak, and we go a layer uh, deeper than that. And then we do operational, what's going on here in the United States, what's going on with the Fed, politics, whatever it is. And then, and only then, can we get tactical and talk about trade. So uh, that's our format here at Top Gun Options. It's called SOT, Strategic Operational, and then tactical. So let's knock out a, a quick strategic brief, uh, taking a look around uh, the globe right now. Obviously, what's happening uh, in Ukraine is troubling. Uh, and, uh, you know, this will be a quick part of the brief because it's going to get worse. Why are we talking about Ukraine? Why wouldn't we be talking about Ukraine? We are one breaking news story, one lower third on CNBC or Fox Business, breaking news, potential, you know, Low yield tactical nuke goes off or chemical weapons or biological weapons. Remember, in warfare, folks, uh, I'm a former Navy FA 18 Hornet fighter pilot, graduated from Top Gun, uh, flew some uh, combat sorties during Operation Southern Watch in no fly zone. So I'm kind of familiar with this stuff. It's uh, the other side is always going to give up easily, right? If you're a student of the Civil War, Bull Run, right? People left Washington, D.C. and went out to go picnic at Bull Run because these you know, no shoes, Confederate uh, morons were going to lose. 600,000 dead uh, Americans later, uh, it was a horror, right? So I bring this up because, ladies and gentlemen, whether it's China, whether it's Iran, whether it's Ukraine, you have got to keep these in your what we call scan in your strategic picture, right? Uh, what was it 10 years ago? Uh, you know, some of you woke up and your 401k was a 101k. Why? because of the Greek debt crisis. Now, if you're sitting in Poughkeepsie going, why is my portfolio imploding because of what's going on in Greece? This is why you have to have that strategic mindset. So one of the trades we're going to talk about today in a little bit is getting bullish, unfortunately, or fortunately, on the defense contractors, right? They are printing money in Ukraine. With everything that's going on in Ukraine, they are the ones that are making money. Now, I'm going to tell you as a human being, that makes my skin crawl, right? But I'm bipolar, and so am I. I'm Gordon Gecko, right? I'm going to put on my $10,000 Armani and tell you how to make money. But as a human being, as Wiz, as a former person who you know wore a uniform, uh, it's awful. This is absolutely horrific. You know, here, here's a picture of a 15 year old girl uh, being put in the ground, right? So war is a horror. And I would hope that we find some sort of peace. But being Gordon Gecko this morning, we got to get bullish on the defense contractors uh, because they are just going to print money, right? U.S. approves heavy weapons sales to newest NATO applicants. So Finland is joining NATO. And how much is it? Let me keep my glasses on here. Uh, five, 850 million in advanced missiles and rockets to Finland. Yesterday, in one of my live trade briefs, we talked about a $16 billion, that's a B, $16 billion backlog in weapons destined for who? 
Ukraine. No, Taiwan. Ladies and gentlemen, the United States military is depleting its stockpiles of weapons. They're all going to Ukraine and you and Taiwan's over here saying, hey, man, you promised us all this stuff. We paid for it. The check cleared. Where is it? So, again, makes my skin crawl as a human being to talk about making money off this stuff. But like uh, Gordon Gecko said in the movie Wall Street, you want a friend, get a dog. Uh, so I'm going to teach you how to make money. You got to get uh, bullish on the defense contractors, man. It is just absolutely uh, insane the, the amount of money that is getting thrown at this stuff. <clears throat> General Dwight David Eisenhower, one of the only generals in this country that's actually won a war, as opposed to General McChrystal, General Petraeus, General Mattis, all these guys who lied to us for 20 years said, oh, we're, we're winning in Afghanistan. Just give us more money and more equipment and more lives. Anyway, uh, when he became president, when he was president, what did he warn us about as Americans? He warned us about the he's like, beware of the defense military industrial complex. He saw it. He won a war, folks, and he saw these companies making Jeeps and airplanes and, you know, all sorts of stuff. And. They liked the money, didn't they? And he's like, all right, well, well we're, we're kind of done. We, we don't know. There, there's a new boogeyman. Oh, so that, that's what happened. So now a, uh, a reputable, quote unquote, DC think tank is saying, we need, you ready for this? One trillion dollars. We, the United States of America, has to invest a trillion dollars into the uh, Ukraine reconstruction. Again, I can share my personal views. I really won't. You can probably guess where I am on this, but we're going to make money off of it. Okay. So, uh, hold on one second. When my mastermind groups text me something, I always take a look at it, make sure it's not a good trade. Okay. Uh, so, Ukraine, nightmare. Taiwan, China, nightmare. Iran, nightmare, except we beat them uh, in soccer and everything's good. So, other than that, around the world, uh, economically, a lot of overspending, a lot of raging inflation, a lot of central banks raising interest rates. It really does feel like we're sitting underneath a house of cards that could really implode uh, at any point. So get ready, right? Being an options trader, I, I kind of love this stuff. Uh, I love the uncertainty. I love the potential volatility. I love the bad news. Again, I said that as an options trader, as a human, it, it sucks. But as an options trader, I think this is awesome. The world environment getting ready to implode we're going to print money. I'm one of the only financial professionals on the face of the planet that predicted the COVID crash, the COVID market crash to the day. What did the professionals do? Remember? Ray Dalio in Davos in January of 2020, famous, you can put this on his, on his tombstone, cash is trash. Famous Ray Dalio quote in January of 2020. What was going on in Davos? Donald Trump interview, January 22nd. He looked into the camera, Joe Kiernan interview, right? At the end of the interview, it was almost a, a throwaway question. Joe Kiernan's like, hey, Mr. President, what, what's up with this, like, this China flu or something? And Trump's like, dumb question, Joe. Why'd you even ask me? That's so dumb. I trust Xi, good dude, great backswing, been to Mar-a-Lago. I love Xi, not coming here. That's a dumb question. It's stupid. You're stupid. You're all stupid. I looked into this camera on this laptop and I said, get out. Buy puts on the S&P 500, get long volatility. He's lying. How did I know that? I had a deep throat, so to speak, in the White House. Who's like, whiz, this thing escaped from a level four weapons lab and it's going to ravage the planet. So the whole way down, what did the smart money tell you? Oh, this is the bottom. Oh, I'd buy here. Oh, this is definitely where I'd buy. Oh, this is the bottom. What did I do? The exact opposite. We made millionaires at Topkin Options out of little old ladies in tennis shoes. I wrote a book about it. It's called COVID Crash. And we nailed the bottom, not only to the day, but to the minute. When was it? March? I forget the exact day. It was the Thursday morning, kind of like we are here right now, where Jerome Powell Six million weekly jobless claim number. Do you guys remember that? I was like, oh my God, I'm getting ready to hit enter on the bearish trade of my life. And what happened? Jerome Powell flew over the market and dropped the biggest financial nuclear weapon in history. And what did I do? I looked into this camera and said, that's it, get bullish. 
but we're, that's when the smart money is like, no, we're, we're going to, I'm like, are you insane? Jeffrey Gunlock manages $150 billion of double line capital at the time said, oh, we're going to, we're heading lower. I'm like, that dude's an idiot. Did you not hear Jerome Powell? And we got bullish. So folks, the smart money ain't that smart. As a matter of fact, the smart money can be pretty damn stupid. So I love when, I love watching CNBC or Fox business when they have these guys on legendary investor, Ray Dalio, or, you know, it, trust me, I helped run a multi-billion dollar volatility arbitrage firm in Chicago. The smart money ain't that smart. Okay, so what's going on? Why do I uh, ramble all about that? It ain't rambling because, ladies and gentlemen, yesterday afternoon, Jerome Powell was insane. It was a porridge speech. What do I mean by that? It wasn't too, he was, there was hawkish talk in there. Going into yesterday's uh, Pal talk, my, a, a bunch of my quote smart money friends said, this will be Jackson Hole part two. What did, what did they mean by that? Remember back here, right there, Jerome Powell in Jackson Hole used the word pain. He said, you know what, folks? They're, uh, you know, it, uh, inflation's raging. Going to have to see some pain. I don't think I've, in my 30 plus years of doing this, that I'd ever believe that the Federal Reserve chief would use the word pain. And he did, as in pain, you all are going to have to suffer. How many of you sat at home for the past two years and hit enter on your laptop and made money out of thin air like Jerome Powell did? How many of you sat at home and spent trillions of dollars on the flu like our government did? So we didn't do any of that. I guess technically we elected uh, people. So we technically did some of this, but... Now we're going to suffer. So go, why am I rambling about this? Because going into yesterday's speech, a lot of the smart money was saying, oh, no, inflation's raging. Uh, he's going he's gonna to bring some heat. He didn't. He, he did and he didn't. And now I sound like Jerome Powell yesterday. There was hawkish stuff in there. We're not, he ended it with a hawk sentence, didn't he? But the market already heard what it wanted to hear. He ended with, we're not going to let up until the job is done. Uh, yeah, no shit, Sherlock. That you that's what normal people do you don't give up until your job if that's your job you do it until it's done y yay but it was interesting because there was there was hawkishness in there right it didn't matter because all the market heard was what uh game on hey we're gonna you know we're gonna throttle back ish maybe he definitely was half pregnant because do you remember a month ago, just 30 days ago, the last time this guy spoke, what did he say? Even at a press conference, the, you know, the lady asked, like, hey, you ready to pivot? He actually said, no, we're not even close. Any talk of us throttling back on these interest rate increases or, or pivoting is insanely premature. That was 30 effing days ago. Yesterday, completely different dude. This is why you can be forgiven in this, in this tactical market for having whiplash. Me, my Topkin Options members, we love it. This year, I'd say 80, 90% of my trading is S&P 500 day sniper shots. Not even day, hour, 15 minutes. We could have, at the open here, sold a bear call spread uh, on the S&P 500 and closed it right now, by now, and made a couple thousand bucks easily. It's, it, it, it's, it's tough to trade this... It, it's easy to trade this type of market. It's a little tougher to invest, right? Because 30 days ago, you have a dude going, I can't believe you'd even ask me that question. We're not even close to softening our stance. To yesterday, soft. Unbelievable. I sat there like, oh my God. Now, let's, all right. So strategic brief done, operational brief. Do I have anything else operationally? Oh yeah, so the, uh, the PCE, uh, which is the Fed's favorite indicator, man. So actually, let me refresh here. So the PCE came out uh, this morning, and it's still at 40-year highs. I mean, it's softened a little bit. Isn't this great? Other than that, uh, Mrs. Kennedy, how was the parade? It softened a little bit, but we're still burning to death from inflation, but it's a little less. 
uh, okay. So this is, this is what we're declaring victory. Hovering near 40-year highs in inflation, but it going down a little bit, yay. I, I get it, yay. But it's still insanely high. If, we, if the Fed was doing their job right now, based on where PCE is, interest rates should be up at around 6%. We're at what, 375 to four? And he said, oh, we'll, we'll get another one in December, but then I think we're done. What? And here's the newest chatter going on with the Fed. What's the newest chatter? The target rate of two, I'm going to talk like I'm Jerome Powell. The target rate of 2% has been historically our uh, target, but we might have to lower the net, meaning raise it. I think 3% is more realistic. This is what we do, folks. I have a podcast called the Max Afterburner Podcast. One of them recently was titled The Great Redefinition. We're in a recession right now. No, we're not. What do you mean? We, we are. Here's the definition of it. Yeah, that's an old definition. This is the new one. So we're out of a recession. Uh, oh, okay. 2% is our target rate for inflation. Y yeah, but it's not anymore. It's good. We're going to raise that. Why? because things suck. Uh, okay, so that's what we do now. If we can't hit our objectives, we change the objectives. We just move the goalposts a little bit. So let's talk about yesterday because the market's actually giving some of what we did back. Hold on, let me re-log in to my account here. Um, well, let me make sure I'm in the right account. We need to be in our accelerated retirement account since it is Thursday morning. So Monday through Thursday at Topkin Options, I do uh, live trade briefs, right? So we get in a room just like this and we knock out live trade briefs. I send out email alerts, text alerts uh, on the uh, positions that I open. Uh, and we generally have a awesome, fun time. Super happy, fun time. So let me get into AR because I want to show you the trade that I just put on this morning. Uh, with my members in accelerated retirement. And we're going to talk about another trade to put on as well. All right, logging in here. All right, so men lie, trades don't. So this morning at 9.35 a.m. at the market open, what did I do? I put on what we call a trade, which is up 1,200 bucks. How many of you would have loved to have made 1,200 bucks in the past 40 minutes? I did, and my members did. What is this? Let's talk through it. Wiz, you just use the word trege. That makes no sense to me. Well, it's going to make sense to you because this is what we do at Topkin Options. Let's go over here to the S&P 500. I'm going to use two words and I'm going to make a third word out of it. A trade. Okay, when I place a trade, when I squeeze the trigger using my money, it's just like a missile or a bomb in the F-18. I better be pretty damn sure that it hits a bad guy, right? Same thing with a trade. I don't fire off trades to just go, yay. I hope that makes money. Hope ain't a strategy. So a trade is something I'm pretty damn sure I have a high probability of making money, okay? Trade, there's your definition of a trade. Now I'm going to give you the word hedge. Now, most of you have heard the term hedge fund. What does hedge mean? It means protection, right? Well, guess what? When I was up in Chicago, when I did research of 10,000 hedge funds, you know, many, you know how many of them actually hedged? About 500 out of the 10,000. Most of them don't hedge. They just use the term. Ladies and gentlemen, if you think hedge funds are supposed to have these blowout returns, they don't. A hedge fund is supposed to make money consistently, not up and then down and all over the place. It should be a nice hedged return. So a hedge is protection, right? So when I, for example, buy puts, you know what? I think the market's going to go down. That's a hedge if I have a bunch of long bullish positions, right? If I have a, lunch, uh, a bunch of bullish positions in my portfolio and I want a little insurance in case they go down, right? I will hedge. I can get long volatility. I can buy puts on the S&P 500. That's called a hedge, all right? So there is word number two that I'm giving you. Trade 
and hedge. Now let's go Frankenstein and let's put these together and call it a trudge. So what I did this morning was I placed a trade that I'm pretty damn sure is going to make money. And it's also going to serve as a hedge to protect my longs in my portfolio. It's called a trudge. So I'm going to brief you on it right now. So just let's just take a look at the S&P 500 here. This yesterday, ladies and gentlemen, was I, I'm going to say, especially based on talking to some of the folks that got run over yesterday, because a bunch of my uh, mastermind uh, members was it's 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 Jackson Hole two. The dude's bringing the heat. This is funny, man. This is like an episode of Axe Capital, because when I saw all this and then when I saw what he said, somebody this is this is Axe Capital. This is Bobby Axelrod, man. I guarantee you somebody on the street obviously knew what he was going to say, and it was a little dovish, started spreading the rumor that what? He's bringing the heat. I have a buddy who works at the Fed, and he's going to use the word pain again. It's going to be exactly like Jackson Hole. Tell your buddies. And what happened? A lot of people I know got short got bearish. Oh, he's bringing the heat, man. This market's going to get pounded into the dirt. And what happened? The exact opposite. Remember, if you short something, if you're sh if you were short Jerome Powell's speech, like he's bringing the heat and we're going to implode, and the exact opposite happened, the second your position's going against you when you're short something, you are getting destroyed exponentially. How do you close a short? You close a short by doing what? Buying whatever you're short. So for my buddies yesterday who were insane, one of them was insanely short, the S&P 500. He was getting destroyed and had to do what? Buy the S&P to get out of it. So this insane rip your face off rally is also a short squeeze. Because I know people who were short that got run over. Today, a little bit of a follow through at the open. And now we're doing what? Remember, these that red line right there is the 200-day moving average. Uh, the green line is the 100-day moving average. And the blue line is the 50-day moving average. These moving averages, ladies and gentlemen, here's the perfect example over here. They act as magnets. You see this? Up through the 50 and then down to it. Uh, rip your face off rally to the 100, and we're going to hang around the 100 for a while. Next stop up to the two, uh, we kissed the 200 and then back to these ladies and gentlemen act as magnets. Okay. The market gets, you know, tends to get pulled up to them, back down to them and to establish a little bit of, you know, base and then up to the next one or down. Right. So you're seeing that right here. We are kind of doing these little touch and goes above the hundred here. And then he spoke, boom, literally yesterday we went up two and a little through the 200. Now, what are we doing? We're giving a little bit of that back to come find some humanity uh, again. Okay. So there's your, there's your poor man's charting uh, in about one minute. Now I'm giving you my commit criteria for the trade that I put on this morning, the trudge. Okay. Let me show you what the trade is right now, which if you had put on, when I talked to you about it, you already made 300 bucks. 400 bucks as I'm talking to you and the S&P is about ready to go down and implode. Here is the trade. Let's go look at it. I bought seven of the January 6th committee. No, I'm kidding. Can somebody, you know, the whole January 6th committee. Can somebody tell me when the Afghanistan surrender committee is meeting? One of the largest most humiliating defeats of the United States military in our Republic's young history, not one hearing. During our pullout, the United States of America, our military, hit a car. Those, are the, those were the enemy bombers. Seven children looking for water. We killed seven kids looking for water. Last time I checked, that's a war crime, but only our enemy does war crimes. When we do something like that, that General Milley, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs, he called it a righteous strike. 48 hours later, he's like, oh, shit, 
we killed seven kids. You know who was found responsible? Nobody. A year later, the Pentagon's like, yeah, um, nobody's uh, responsible for that. Sorry. Whenever I see January 6th, it makes my skin crawl. Bunch of stupid idiots in Washington, D.C. in a riot. Now, if you think that a dude wearing a buffalo hat and face paint was going to topple our republic, I got problems. Bunch of idiots that day. You haven't seen an insurrection. Trust me. But anyway, other than that, Mrs. Lincoln, I bought the January 6th 4,000 puts. When I buy puts, folks, what am I saying? I think that the S&P is going to be below 4,000. Okay? I sold underneath those puts the 3950s. Let's go look on the chart what I did. Annotate. So I why the 4,000, Wiz? Look at where we were. You see that 4,000 level? It actually was a hover point in between the 200 and 100 day. This really doesn't happen that often, folks. I showed you over here on the left side of the chart what usually happens. I call this no man's land. Just like all quiet on the Western front, the market don't live in between moving averages. It moves. This was a weird one in between the 100. And now it's, it's also tight. It's tight in there, right? I mean, this is, you know, this was tight in here between the, uh, the, the 200 and the 100. I get it. But look, there's the 4,000. It was kind of a resistance point, wasn't it? So between now and January 6th, if or when, out here in the future that the S&P decides to give some of this back, which I fully think it will, I bought the puts right there. And then down, you see the, the chop? You see all that bottom chop? You see this range right here? The, that's the 3950. Isn't that cool? So I bought these 4000s up here, saying it's going to go through 4000. And then I sold the 3950s. Remember, when you buy something, if you're new to options, I'm going to give you a quick options lesson. When you buy something, what happens? You got to open up your wallet or your purse and give some money. That is a debit. What happens when you sell something? You have a yard sale, you sell your home, you sell a car. What happens? You make money. So ladies and gentlemen, this tactic that uh, this tredge is a bear put spread. I'm bearish on the S&P 500. I'm using puts and it's a spread. The contracts are, or the strikes are spread out. Okay, that's a bear put spread. So we come out of pocket paying for the 4,000 puts. We sell lower strike puts at the 3950, which brings in a little money and it's a bear put spread. Okay. That is the tactic that I would strongly recommend you do today because I don't think, because it, it, it's interesting because after these PAL speeches today, I'm actually going to get on my closing mastermind call because short squeezes, if they're violent, they last a couple of day, two, three days. If they're not violent, it's it's a little longer. So I think, you know, tomorrow's Friday. Let's talk about Friday morning real quick before I forget. What is up tomorrow? We get non-farm payroll. We get the unemployment uh, information tomorrow morning, right? It's already out. What are you talking about, Wiz? It's tomorrow morning. I'm not Nostradamus, but I'm pretty damn sure that Jerome Powell, first of all, knew the inflation numbers today. And he knows the jobs numbers <laughs> Friday morning. Did you see what happened yesterday? The ADP numbers came out, right? So the ADP, num ADP is a private company. It ain't Uncle Sam. It's not the government. But look at the ADP numbers that came out yesterday. Last month was 239. ADP was looking for a softening of 196. Holy crap. Swing and a big miss. 127. So the ADP numbers were pretty bad, right? But guess what? That's good news. Well, well, hold on, folks. Come on, Wiz. People losing their jobs is good news. It is for Jerome Powell, folks. 
this labor market being great and everything's great and everything, ask Joe Biden and Jerome Powell, everything's great in the economy and inflation is raging. They need to see people, they're not going to tell you this publicly, I will tell you this, they need to see people losing their jobs. So at least according to the ADP numbers, we'll get confirmation tomorrow from Uncle Sam, this is bad. So remember, in bizarro market, which we're living in, bad news is good news. You ready for this? Write that down. In bizarro market, bad news is good news. And awful news is great news. I, I, and trust me, if you're a retail trader and you're sitting here going, I have no, this is why retail traders hate Wall Street, right? Because it's, it's kind of opposite thinking, but it isn't, folks. It isn't. This isn't a rational market. I was sitting in the board of trade. I ran over to the CBO at the height of the financial crisis. I was at ground zero, folks, in Chicago when the VIX hit 90 or whatever it was that day. You want to see insanity? And as the CEO, the founder of the Options News Network, I said on several of my programs around the time, I'm like, don't do it, George Bush. Don't do it, Ben Bernanke. Don't jump in to save capitalism. Don't give everybody a trophy, right? Things need to be able to fail. No, you can't do that. Well, we let a couple fail, right? Lehman Brothers and Bear Stearns. And then, well, we can't have more than that. Why? Guess what happened after they failed? The sun came up the next day. Life goes on. So the Federal Reserve, it's 14 years later, I'm right. The, it, this created a massive moral hazard. What the Fed did, ladies and gentlemen, is like the Pope coming out on his balcony and going, got it wrong, folks. There's no such thing as hell. Hell doesn't exist. Have a great time. And we've been having a great time. So take a look, let's take a look. At, speaking of having a great time, let's go take a look at the S&P 500. SPX, let's move this out of the way. Let's bring up my chart. Look at the five-year chart of the S&P 500. So looking at this, ladies and gentlemen, so there's the COVID crash that I called to the day. There's the pivot that I called to the second minute. And here is your crack pipe. There is the Federal Reserve and Democrats and Republicans spending like drunken sailors. And I know exactly what a drunken sailor spends like. Here's the crack pipe trying to be taken away gently. You ask me, this is where we should be going down to here. What? Let me give you my 2023 prediction. Joe Biden's junior year will be a shit show recession train wreck bear market. That's what this year was. My prediction for Joe Biden's sophomore year were four of those things. I had all of them right until they redefined what a recession was. So now we're not in one anymore. But if you listen to Jamie Dimon, you look, look at all the big tech companies laying off tens of thousands of people. So folks, I'm telling you, we will be in a massive recession in 2023. This should happen. There, there's a big delta. There's a lot of airspace. There's a lot of dark underneath here, ladies and gentlemen. That's what should happen. Now, if you uh, become a Topkin Options member, I'm going to give you a bunch of whizisms. Here's a whizism. Trade the market you have not the one you want. Be present. If the market is not doing what you think it should be doing, you're wrong, not the market, <laughs> right? I learned this day one of trading and investing. Price is price. That's the price. It shouldn't be that. All right, well, then make a bet, right? My volatility arbitrage firm I was at, that's where they lived. Price discrepancies. If you're selling cheeseburgers on this corner for a dollar and somebody else is selling them for a dollar 20 over, what do you do? You buy a ton at the dollar and you sell them in the middle at a dollar 10. This ain't rocket surgery. It's not hard. But ladies and gentlemen, I think 
based on his speech yet, because underneath you, let me draw that again, folks. It's funny, everybody that I know, quote unquote, smart money, let's draw this down here and this down here. This whole, every one of these folks here, 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 here. What was the discussions out of the Wall Street? What is Powell, a lot of P's, lot, what is Powell's pain point? Meaning, how much pain do you think Powell's going to let the market inflict before he kind of softens his stance, right? Remember the, the lady asked in the last press conference, when, when are you looking to pivot? Man, I was thinking the middle of next year. Based on his press conference yesterday, it sounds like December is a foregone conclusion. Obviously, we're going to get 50 or 75. I, I didn't look at the, the Fed funds futures rate uh, after yesterday. Um, but he's kind of, that was, I love the way uh, Schiff wrote it. That was a soft pivot. That was a soft pivot yesterday, folks. So, again, Trade the market you have, not the one you want. I, I, there's no way in hell he should be pivoting right now. But guess what? Markets can't go down. You can't. There's, there's something that the Fed often looks at as well, and it's called the wealth effect, right? If Americans feel like it, a lot of inflation besides being real is also this, right? The president says it and the Fed says it. And Janet Yellen, our treasury secretary, says it, who's also... Uh, Janet Yellen is also a firefighter and an arsonist, right? She was the Fed chief for years and participated in this absolute insane in insanity. Um, so inflation being mental, right? When you go to the store, you look at the gallon of milk and you're like, oh my God, that's insane. Or if, unless you take a hover car, you fill up your car and you're like, oh my God. So it's mental too. So this man doing this soft pivot yesterday is kind of doing the whole, we need to get Americans thinking that things are getting better. We sat through the most recent earnings, ladies and gentlemen, and just about every company that I cared about was what? Bearish and laying people off. It was insane. I'm like, uh, now remember, again, let's go Gordon Gecko. Remember, Companies, as long as they're not like literally about to go out of business, companies laying people off is what? Bullish. What? You heard me. That's a Gordon Gecko talking. They're cutting expenses. There ain't no 401ks, healthcare, and salaries we're paying anymore. That's great. We're lowering headcounts. So that's why recently you've seen a couple of companies that have said we're announcing a bunch of layoffs. The stock went through the roof. It's It sucks, but again... I'm teaching you how to make money. If you want a friend, <laughs> get a dog. All right. So covered our trade. You got a free trade today that's already making money. And we're let's go look at the S&P uh, the, for today chart. Because we've kind of imploded and we found a little bit. Let me drop some lines in here. 40, 50. So we uh, rip your face off rally yesterday. Here's our open today. It sold off. We're finding a little bit. Of, remember the, the s and I'll teach you this. Uh, the s and let me drop a 25 in here. It moves in $25 increments usually, right? That This is, you can see it yesterday to here, to that one. It, it usually moves 4,100. Wow. I, gotta, I can't believe I'm dropping in a 4,100 line and we need a 4,075. Jeez. That's insane. You know what? I was going to get bullish on a defense contractor, but I gave you your, your one free trade for today. This is some I, I would be, this would be uh, malpractice as an options trader if we didn't talk about this right now. Look at the VIX. This is absolute insanity. The VIX is at 20. What is the VIX? It's the SIBO, Chicago Board Options Exchange. Market Volatility Index. Now, if you want to sound smart at a cocktail party, you call it that, volatility. Use the word volatility, you look smart. I ditch it. I'm a political science major from New Jersey. It's the Uncertainty Index. Delete the word volatility, insert the word volatility. <laughs> uncertainty. Exactly. Copy, paste. Why am I talking, ranting about this? Look at a one-year chart of the, this is the fear gauge, folks. 
Wiz, you just told us World War I trench warfare is going on in Eastern Europe. People are dying in this brief as we talk in this brief. There might be a nuclear use or a chemical or weapons. You talked about China. You talked about the Middle East and Iran. And the VIX is down here. Look at a one-year chart of the VIX. Ladies and gentlemen, here is another wisdom that you can take to the bank. Write this down. When volatility is cheap, you buy it. When volatility is expensive, you sell it. Folks, the VIX is a mean reverting instrument. Look at that. It's a heart rate monitor. It goes up. It spikes on bad, on uncertainty. It goes down when that badness or uncertainty is cleared up. Look at every time the VIX in the past year has hit around 20. What does it do? Freak out, freak out, freak out, freak out. Gradual freak out. So <clears throat> does anybody in this brief believe that the VIX is going to stay here 20 for the rest of our lives? No, of course not. Something is going to happen out here on the right side of the chart that is going to cause the market to freak out. What is it? My call sign's whiz, not Nostradamus. This is why we brief SOT, Strategic Operational Tactics. I just rambled through a couple of things that can cause the VIX to go up. Here's another free trade for today. If <clears throat> you want to, this is another. So we have a tread, John. We had the S&P 500 trudge. Ladies and gentlemen, this could be another trudge or a no-kidding trade. Go out about a month from now, uh, January 4. Let's go out to January 4, folks, and go up. Let's, look, let's just open up the strikes. Let's go. Uh, you know what? Let's let's go to the strike. I'm actually long. Let's go to the regular December. Three weeks from now, ladies and gentlemen, let's go up. The VIX is at 20, ladies and gentlemen. I want you to look at some of look at the look at the uh, look look at some of these strikes. Let me annotate here. The th folks we're at 20. Look at the VIX right now. Look at the 35 strike. 220, 218,000. The 37 strike, 120. The 40 strike, 151. The four, folks, the 45 strike. Oh, my, oh, let me uh, delete some of that stuff. Uh, folks, it, it, this is insane. So again, the, 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 there's a lot of quote unquote smart money at look at the 45 strike 122,000 folks. That's the VIX doubling from here in three weeks. Now, a lot of that is obviously institutional folks. Like some of my buddies who are like, dude, how do I protect all my longs? Cause something might, bad might happen. Buy some upside calls on the VIX. Yay. I'm an options trader. Now pay me my consulting fee. Right? So. A good idea right now, again, let's just go look at the chart. A good idea right now, ladies and gentlemen, is to get long. Can it go lower? Sure. I mean, we've, we've seen lower. The 15s. But I'm telling you, folks, I've been doing this for over three decades. Every time, Let's just open up the chart a little bit. Look at a two-year chart of the VIX. And then, obviously, the five-year chart, you're going to see what? COVID. Look at that freak out, man, up until the upper 80s. This was the, I was in the SIBO the last time the VIX hit this. But ladies and gentlemen, look at the VIX. I'm telling you right now, we talked about an S&P 500 trudge, but folks, this is, the, the hair in the back of my neck is standing up, which means I, I need, it's about time for me to get a haircut. Something, something's out there, something's out there. Now, if, if you're sitting here going, nah, I don't believe that. The best thing about options trading, and I'll teach you here Top Gun Options, is if you're listening to me and you go, that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Guess what you can do in options? Do the exact opposite. How many of you in this room would get bearish on volatility right now? Short. Now, hopefully everybody in this room with a brain would be like, Ooh, no, no, I wouldn't be short in volatility down here precisely now you can sit on your hands and wait for it to kind of move but volatility ladies and gentlemen is my dad at the airport my dad bless his heart 
in heaven. Matthew, I need to go to the airport at eight, eight o'clock tomorrow morning. Dad, you're, did you get an earlier flight? Your flight's at like four in the afternoon. No, I just, I, I got my book and I'll sit at the gate because if I'm late, they're not bringing the plane back for me, right? It's they, as soon as they close the cabin door, it's too late. So I tell my members with volatility, it is always better to be early because in one text alert from a buddy or one breaking news uh, on the TV, the VIX can be up 10, 20, 30% in the blink of an eye. Okay, so I strongly recommend that you be early on the VIX and it would be right about now. Uh, okay, so hey, we have about, I think David, you can correct me if I'm wrong. I think I'm going to 11. So let me, let me turn it over to you. Uh, William, that's a good question. So um, what could cause VIX to break 20 to the downside? William, at this point, Jesus, Ganesh, Buddha, and Muhammad coming back to life. I, I you know, uh, uh, well, you know what, William? Here's what could cause, <clears throat> excuse me, here, the, the VIX to break below 20, peace in Ukraine. If we see, hey, breaking news, you know, ceasefire announced, the VIX will go to 15. So I'm wrong. I'm like, nothing could make the VIX go lower from here. Absolutely. Peace in Ukraine would bring it to the downside. <clears throat> uh, Keiko, this is the first time I've heard you. I like your straight up, down to earth approach and thinking. It really enjoyed what you have presented. Thanks for all your thoughts and nuggets you have shared today. Wow, I appreciate that. That was uh, nice. Um, yeah, and you know, uh, let me get the shameless plug out of the way uh, first. If you are new to me and you kind of like what I'm talking about, let me just give you a uh, kind of a, a quick, uh, I call it a gateway drug to, to join, uh, top gun options. Um, it would be, uh, our solo Amazon, uh, membership top gun options.com slash solo Amazon monthly. Yeah, there we go. Uh, it's only 97 bucks a month. Let me scroll down to that. Do, 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 do. Let me give you the link. Um, right here. It's topconoptions.com slash solo dash Amazon monthly every Monday at, um, oh, David's got it. Uh, thanks, David. Every Monday at 10 a.m. I do a solo Amazon live trade brief. What do we trade in solo Amazon? It's like Bugs Bunny, that Bugs Bunny cartoon when he's like, who's buried in Grant's tomb? We only trade Amazon. <clears throat> and if you're sitting there going, hey, that makes no sense. Why would you only trade one name? You're going to learn why. You absolutely have been lied to for most of your investing career. You do not need to diversify. Oh my God, I can't believe that guy just said that. Warren Buffett. Diversification is a protection against ignorance. It makes very little sense for those who know what they're doing. Now, trust me, I've been sitting on Twitter watching these. I, I feel horrible for these people. Like, I put all of my money in crypto and now I'm broke. Okay. I nobody saw that coming, right? But listen to me, folks. Amazon, you don't need to diversify. Amazon is diversified in and of itself. They have an airline, Amazon, they have an entertainment division, AWS, Amazon Web Services is Microsoft. Amazon, right now, folks, is like Mercury. If you smashed Amazon and tried, it's a monopoly, we're going to break it up. It would create like 12 monopolies underneath it. So, uh, solo Amazon is the service. If you're new and you kind of like what I presented today, this is our gateway drug to join TGO. I mean, I can pitch you on some of our higher price products, but this is where most people, if uh, you want to take a test flight for 30 days, it's only 97 uh, bucks a month. When I go out in Boca Raton or Miami, or I don't drink anymore, so I have to use a different analogy because I'm like, you know what? Well, I'll stick with the drinking thing. I guarantee you a round of drinks in Boca Raton, Fort Lauderdale, or Miami is a hell of a lot more expensive than 97 bucks a month. Oh my God, there's the, uh, there was a good article the other day about how a year, what was it, a year ago or so, all the crypto dudes in Miami at the crypto conference buying $50,000 tables and champagne 
And now most of the clubs in Miami are, are like, some of them are closing down. They were like, everybody was paying with crypto. And now all these clubs are like going bankrupt. Anyway, that's a weird tangent. Uh, to say that if you're sitting here going, why would you only trade Amazon? I just gave you the reason. So it's 97 bucks if you want to check out what we do uh, here at uh, Top Gun Options. Uh, you know what another way to do it is? Topgunoptions.com slash sit rep. If you just, I do like a daily video some days when I'm not like super busy uh, and it's free. It's 10, 15 minute uh, market video. If you just want to kind of come and see what I do for free uh, and check us out. So I'll, I'll drop that in the chat box as well. Before I go in four minutes, what questions, what symbols do you have uh, for me? Does anybody have a symbol uh, that you need me to uh, take a look at? LRN. I'll give you an immediate answer. I have no idea what LRN is. So let's go learn together. Is it learn? Stride. I don't even know what stride is. Stride. What does it do? <laughs> so here's the, I, I, you know what? That was a dumb question to ask you guys and gals. I don't do this, right? I don't, it, it's funny because, you know, we, we have a service uh, at Top Gun Options called Top Gun, uh, or I'm sorry, Tomcat Charts. And I have a, a, a brother, he was a Tomcat guy, Bart, who does this stuff. He'll look at a chart right off the bat and <clears throat> be able to like plot the A, B, C, D, reverse doji with a cup handle twist. I don't do that. I'm a fundamental trader and a uh, volatility trader and a technical analysis trader. You know how I trade? If you've ever seen a, like in the movie Maverick, there was an E2 Hawkeye, right? There was a propeller plane with a, it looked like a UFO landed on top of it. That's how I trade. I, I look at everything. So I just don't look at a chart. So I'm going to answer your LRN with, I have no idea. <laughs> so I, folks, I'm a card counter. I used to be a card counter. I don't walk up to a blackjack table, sit down and, and put some money down. I count the deck. If I can, if it's not like a six deck type of thing, I take a look first, man. Before I start firing anything, I start looking at stuff, man. Uh, Takeo, UNG, bullish. Now I can do that because it's, uh, I, you have got, we are long term bullish on COP, on uh, Conoco Phillips. You have got to get bullish on the energy sector. I don't care what your political beliefs are uh, right now. If a Republican wins in 2024, it will be drill, baby, drill. So right now, this is, you know, pick up your binoculars and look down range. Uh, since we are technically in, a, in an accelerated retirement brief, what I want you to do is pick up binoculars and look down range, bullish on the energy sector. Okay, no matter how many Teslas or EVs or solar panels that the Democrats want to force down your throat, I'm going to be Mad Max. I'm going to have my Porsche. And I'm going to be battling people in the future for gasoline. So get long-term <laughs> bullish on, uh, uh, on energy. Uh, CB, love that trade. LMT, Lockheed Martin, buy it with both hands. Absolutely. Lockheed, Boeing, Raytheon, General Dynamics. Buy all of the defense contractors. Sell the wife, sell the kids, mortgage the house, get bullish on the, uh, on the defense contractors. 